In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 6.2, Globalization and Trade Restrictions. So globalization is the world's economies that become increasingly interdependent and interconnected, as single countries cannot be specialists in agriculture, manufacturing and services Countries have naturally decided to specialise in certain economic sectors. And as the world trades with each other on a day-to-day -day basis, the world has benefited from higher productivity levels, lower prices and higher quality products. And as consumers buy products from all over the world, this increases their choices and cross-border productions are rapidly expanding. The changes in trade restrictions has facilitated globalization. This is by reducing tariffs and quotas, which lower the cost of trade and trade barriers. And with lower trade barriers, this will reduce the cost to trade, and this will lead to global trade and economic interdependence. A really good example is the European Union, as every country that is a member of the EU will be able to trade freely with one another, without any tariffs or quotas. The changes in transportation costs facilitate globalization, as the lower transportation costs will reduce international trade costs and barriers. As transportation costs further decline, this fosters greater global economic integration and interdependence. For example, the container shipping industry has revolutionized global trade. This has lowered the cost of moving a large quantity of goods from one country to another at a very low cost. This improves efficiency. The changes in communication costs has also facilitated globalization as low cost of communications will allow for better global business coordination as the internet and video tools have enabled real-time cross-border operations. The most recent example that you could probably relate to was learning online during COVID. And e-commerce platforms have expanded global trade through efficient and online marketplaces. And the number of people who are willing to buy things online is growing year on year. And lastly, the movement of multinational companies has facilitated globalization as they are able to expand overseas, which increases the trade and investment within the country. As multinational companies have a lot of market power, they are able to optimize efficient use of supply chains, which lower costs. Some examples include Coca-Cola's global reach and Toyota's worldwide production networks. So moving on to the effects of globalization, and the first is the effect on international trade. Globalization promotes trade without government restrictions or barriers, which allow countries to specialize in goods that are made the most efficiently, meaning you get a higher quality and lower price. And lastly, it promotes global economic interdependence. Globalization has also had an effect on competition, as globalization has opened up markets significantly. This increases competition and drives innovation. Some examples are Amazon and Alibaba, who have disrupted traditional retail globally. Another example of a multinational company, such as Huawei, as they are able to challenge the leaders of the market, which pushes out efficiency and lowers costs. And what Huawei did was that they were able to install low-cost telecommunications infrastructure in many countries. And globalization's effect on the environment, as you would imagine, is bad, as the increase of transportation and trade will increase its emissions, worsening climate change. However, Global cooperation between companies and countries has enabled agreements such as the Paris Agreement on Emissions, and multinational companies are able to adopt greener practices due to rising consumer awareness and government intervention. The effect of globalization on migration 
is that people within the country will move to another country when there are better wages and opportunities. For example, in the EU, the open borders has enabled free movement of workers across member states, meaning someone from France can move to Germany with very little paperwork. On the other hand, there will be reduced globalization, such as Brexit, as this has restricted migration and caused labour shortages within the EU. This happened in 2016. Globalisation has also affected income distribution, as globalisation has created jobs, but mainly benefits skilled workers and large firms. Manufacturing jobs often move abroad, causing mass unemployment in certain regions of a country. But protectionist measures, such as the US tariffs on China, will protect jobs, but raise consumer prices. Globalization's effect on economic development has managed to boost development through trade and foreign investments. Restrictions to global limits market access and investments. So if a country really wants to thrive and experience economic growth and development, they need to be open to trade as it fosters growth and development opportunities. Moving on to the role of multinational companies. What multinational companies are, essentially, are very large companies that operate in more than one country, or multiple countries. Some examples include, although we know this as a franchise, but McDonald's is a multinational company, Toyota, Apple, and Tencent, and many more. And the production processes are often spread across countries for efficiency, which allow them to experience low costs. The advantages of multinational companies is that they enable job creation, so they create jobs in the local economy which improve living standards in the host country. They are also able to lower prices due to economies of scale, which can lower the prices globally. Another advantage is they have an increased customer base due to having a presence in multiple countries which will increase their profits and they're able to avoid or somewhat avoid trade restrictions as they can bypass tariffs and import restrictions as they have the power to negotiate with local governments which can increase new jobs and investment for the host country. As noted before, they are able to access new markets for a further increase in their customer base and profits. They are also able to negotiate with governments preferable tax rates as governments acknowledge the benefits of multinational companies regarding economic growth. The disadvantages of multinational companies is that they could potentially be working in very poor working conditions. They are criticised for using cost-cutting practices that harm their workers. The impact on local domestic firms is that they provide very high competitive pressure, which could result these firms to leave the market altogether. Another disadvantage is that they may be more powerful than some governments as some multinational companies earn more revenue than some host countries' GDP. Although this is a favourable environment for the multinational company, but not so much for the host country. And there could be an over-reliance in the host countries. So if a multinational company is overly relied on in a particular host country, if they move or relocate, this could cause mass unemployment. Moving on to the types of trade restrictions and methods of protection. Firstly, we have tariffs. This makes importing goods and services more expensive as they are applying a tax or a tariff on any imported good, which increases the cost of production. Prices of foreign goods will increase and this lowers the quantity of foreign goods within the domestic country and protects the domestic firms. Secondly, import quotas are set limits on the quantity imported within the host country, so a country can limit the number of cars, for instance, imported to a set number, let's say 5 million. A subsidy is a sum of money given to the domestic firms from the government. This will lower their cost of production, meaning that they can create higher quality in larger quantities. Firms are now able to lower their price due to a lower cost of production, making them more competitive 
compared to imports. An embargo is a direct banning of a product within the domestic country. So some demerit goods are completely banned by government, such as Cuban cigars in the USA. However, this may be due to political reasons. Moving on to the reasons for trade restrictions by governments and the impact of these trade restrictions on the home country and its trading partners. Firstly, trade restrictions protect infant industries. So this shields new industries within the domestic economy from foreign competition. So this allows them to grow, achieve economies of scale, and then over time they can gain international competitiveness. The second reason is to protect declining industries, as a gradual decline will avoid sudden unemployment in major industries. So some industries will receive some temporary relief, which allows for a smoother transition, allowing the unemployed individuals to find new jobs. Trade protection is also required for strategic industries. This safeguards essential sectors like agriculture and defense. This ensures steady supplies during wars and natural disasters, as countries aim to be self-sufficient in these times. This reduces the reliance on foreign goods like food and energy. For example, in Germany, for many decades, it relied heavily on Russia for natural gas, using its pipelines like Nord Stream. This dependence created energy security risks, especially after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Another reason for trade protection is to avoid foreign dumping. This stops foreign firms by selling well below the cost to compete unfairly. And if they do this, this eliminates domestic firms, which cannot compete with the low prices. Foreign government then also subsidizes abroad to even further create unfair competition for their own goods. For some countries, this is to reduce the deficit on the current account, because this limits imports, which narrows trade deficits temporarily. However, there is a risk of the deficit returning if the local domestic competitiveness is weak. And not only so, a retaliation from other countries such as counter-tariffs may worsen the trade balance. Another reason for trade protection is to raise tax revenue as tariffs generate crucial income for some governments. As some countries are known as very low tax capacity countries, Tariffs will fund public services as this will give them the revenue they require. For example, Benin raises 40% of their revenue via tariffs. Another reason for trade protection is the restriction of the import of demerit goods. This bans harmful products deemed to be unsafe for customers. This protects the public health from dangerous imports and also reduces long-term social and healthcare costs to society. Trade protection also promotes environmental sustainability abroad as this counters weak environmental standards abroad as some countries have a lower environmental standard compared to the host country. This prevents unfair competition from polluting industries with lower standards and encourages sustainable global trade practices. The disadvantages of trade protection is that consumers will have less choice as they will have less imports to choose from, so choice is less abundant. Trade protection also distorts the market signals, which means there will be a global misallocation of resources. So now consumers do not have the option to purchase high quality and low priced imports. And the last disadvantage is there is a potential of retaliation which is a reaction by the other countries of imposing their own tariffs. For instance, the USA has increased tariffs on Chinese goods at an average of 18%, and the Chinese is trying to counter this tariff by imposing their own tariffs on their exports. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.